Utah, the state in desperate need of the L-shaped Tetris piece. We now know that one of the easiest ways to stop the spread of coronavirus is just to have everybody wear a mask. Unfortunately, telling everyone to wear a mask is also one of the easiest ways to spread idiocy. After more than one week since schools have reopened in Washington County, the Liberty Action Coalition hosted a rally in front of the school district building this morning. Up to a thousand people showed up, saying that children being forced to wear masks in classrooms is illegal and even unconstitutional. Now hundreds have gathered here in front of the Washington County Administration building calling for the end of a mask mandate. If we want to wear a mask, that's fine. We can take care of ourselves. When George Floyd was saying, I can't breathe, and then he died, and now we're wearing a mask and we say, I can't breathe, but we're being forced to wear it anyway. I'll tell you another reason I'd hate masks. Most child molesters love them. God damn, these people were crazy. In fact, you know what? They should have let them storm the school building because maybe they would have accidentally learned something. Like I'm, I'm still trying to process everything that was going on at that rally. No matter how many times I watch that video, I still find new things to process. Like that video is the closest thing I've seen to Facebook comments happening in real life. I like individual freedom. White people are the real George Floyd. Happy birthday, Martha. Mask wearing was invented by Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, and here's another reason it's hard for America to get the pandemic under control. Even when places do have rules for social distancing, this is how some people follow them. Growing concerns over COVID clusters, especially on college campuses. In Ohio, police cited several people at a house near Miami University during the Labor Day weekend. Body camera footage captured a stunning exchange between an officer and a student. Were there? I assume you probably know why I want to talk to you. Just too many people. Well, do you know what the, the ordinance is? 10 people. Yeah. yeah. How many people are in the house? 20 people inside? Yeah, you might want to start clearing them out, man. There's an in- I've never seen this before. There's an input on the computer that you tested positive for COVID? Yes. When was this? This was on a week ago. Are you supposed to be quarantining? Yeah, that's why I'm at my house. Do you have other people here and you, you're positive for COVID? Email that's what we're trying to prevent. Yeah, I know. We want to keep this town open. What the issue is. Uh, that's why I was staying home. <sighs> we are so screwed. The main part of quarantine isn't about being at your house, my friend. It's about being away from other people so that you don't spread the disease. I'm scared to know where this guy puts a condom on his body. At this point, I'm glad it's just coronavirus. Can you imagine this dude handling Ebola? Wait, so I'm not supposed to eat a monkey? Cause I gotta tell you, there was some confusion there. Oh, and just by the way, watching this police officer's body cam footage was like playing a virtual reality game called White Privilege. Because this kid was clearly breaking the law, but the cop's tone of voice sounded like he was telling him today's specials. Hi, uh, could I interest you in not breaking the law today? I'll give you a few minutes to think it over and I'll, I'll come back. So, some people are misinformed, some people are crazy, and some people are both. People like Donald Jaundice Trump, President of the United States, and one man super spreader. Overnight at a packed indoor rally, President Trump breaking Nevada's COVID restrictions to court voters in the key battleground state. We're going to win Nevada. Speaking to a throng of mostly maskless supporters, his first indoor rally in nearly three months. The state prohibits gatherings of more than 50 people, but Trump defiant. If the governor comes after you, which he shouldn't be doing, I'll be with you all the way. While those behind the president and in front of the cameras wore masks, most of the crowd did not. But that didn't bother supporters like Mila Christensen, who camped out overnight. I'm not wearing a mask. That's a, it shows that I trust my president. Okay, look, I get why a Trump fan would have trusted Trump before, but how do you still trust this man after he admitted that he's been downplaying the coronavirus this whole time? I don't get it. I, don't, I really don't get it. What do you mean you trust him? This is like believing a Nigerian email scammer after he tells you that he's a Nigerian email scammer. Hello. I'm a small time criminal pretending to be a wealthy prince. Will you send me some money? You know what? I like this guy's honesty. I will send him $50,000. And as for Trump, how are you gonna call yourself the president of law and order when you're openly flouting the law? And not even for like a noble reason, no. It's just so that he can spend 90 minutes ranting about how vegetables were invented by the deep state and Hillary Clinton. 
And this isn't just about breaking the law. What Donald Trump is doing here is actually dangerous. The last time Trump held an indoor rally, he lost 25% of his black friends. So there you have it. Everyone from college students to grandmas to the president himself is helping this virus continue spreading. But I guess that's the genius of America's coronavirus response. Unlike other countries that are preparing for the second wave, America realized you don't have to deal with the second wave if you never get over the first. The coronavirus pandemic has been devastating for a number of industries. The sports industry, the restaurant industry, and not to mention Stouffer's line of frozen back dinners. And corona has been especially bad for travel. I mean, at the beginning of the outbreak, the biggest trip most of us could take was from our bed to the toilets. But gradually, people have started to realize that they can still go on trips. They just have to do it a little more old school. A five-star comeback. Motel seeing a surge in business as more Americans look to social distance during the pandemic. Motels may seem like relics of a bygone era, but not in 2020. I prefer this over a hotel. I can just walk straight to my room. Everything's clean. I'm not touching a lot of things. Many of the motels offer their own little kitchenettes. So you're self-contained in that area too. You just go out, get your groceries, come in and stay at home. Motels are sort of built for pandemics. One of the reasons they're becoming more popular right now is because you don't have to walk through a crowded lobby to get to your room. You don't have to get on an elevator. We're at a Motel 6, by the way, and your air conditioning unit is your own. So you don't have to worry about the virus spreading through different rooms. Yes, good news, people. You don't have to worry about coronavirus at motels, which means now you can spend more time worrying about whether the drug deal in the next room is gonna go bad. I think that's a pretty fair price for 10 kilos, Mr. Scorpion. Please just take it. I also get why motels make much more sense than hotels right now. I mean, COVID can't get you if you get stabbed in the parking lot first. Plus, motels already have all the other diseases that Corona is probably afraid to step on their turf. Yeah, Corona's like, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll just wait for you outside. You know, you think about it. Coronavirus is actually one of the more bougie diseases. You know, think about it. Think about where Corona is, what it's doing. Corona's like, I like going on cruises and I love being in restaurants. I don't like being outside. And fitness classes, oh my God, I love those. Basically like anywhere with vitamin water. So a road trip to a motel is one way to make vacations a little safer. But safer yet is a road trip in a motel. RVs have become the trendy way to vacation during the pandemic. The demand is so high, RV dealers say inventory across the state is low. An RV is a socially distanced vehicle, a socially distanced vacation, and a way to corral or keep your family together. This motorhome is 36 feet long and 8 feet wide, about the size of a city bus. No special license is required. Oh, oh no! I was a little tight with the, uh, that was my back wheel, right? With more RVs on the roads, more inexperienced drivers are putting the wreck in recreational vehicle. God damn, that was crazy. And I know what you're thinking right now. Trevor, if my whole family is in that RV and we crash and die, isn't that worse than some of us getting coronavirus? Well, honestly, guys, I don't know. Because if one family member dies, we all have to go to their funeral. But if we all die together, then no one is sad. It's also funny how that guy said, RVs are a great way to keep your family together. Because is that really the problem we're having right now? Like, who's sitting out there like, guys, I love that we're spending every waking moment together, but what if we could do it in an even smaller space? Either way though, this shows you why America is such a strange place. Because if you're forced to live in your car, you get tickets, the police hassle you, People call you a blight. But if your car has a stove in it, oh, then you're just living the dream. So, Corona has made road trips great again. But what if you wanna go somewhere that you can't drive to? Well, that's where things get tricky because although airline travel is surprisingly safe, it's not just the virus that you need to be worried about. A passenger gets kicked off a plane after a dispute over a face mask. We're seeing incidents like this again and again. More than 700 people are now on airlines' no-fly list, all because they refuse to wear a mask while traveling. Tension aboard a Newark-bound flight as every single passenger is forced off, all because one of them wasn't wearing a mask. 
fists were thrown after a woman refused to wear a mask on an American Airlines flight. Okay, people, I can understand why some don't wanna wear masks outdoors, right? I can stretch my mind to understand why people don't wanna wear a mask at a place like the gym. But airplanes, airplanes are the one place where your individual desires don't mean shit. Oh, I don't feel comfortable wearing a mask on a plane. Uh, I don't- Nobody feels comfortable. That's what flying is all about. They tell you when you can stand. They tell you when you can eat. Hell, they tell you when you can use the bathroom. Flying is the only time after fourth grade where you need to get permission to go pee. Flying is not about your personal comfort. It's about safety. You think I wanna take off my shoes, huh? And then walk through a machine that exists solely to take fancy dick pics of me? And by the way, I can't believe anyone is actually brawling on an airplane. That requires way too much work, especially if you're in the window seat. Cause then you gotta do that weird little shimmy out first. What did you say to me, asshole? <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Here, let me hold, I'll hold your ginger ale. I just said, what did you say to me, asshole? And it's not just corona and assholes that the airline industry is struggling with right now. Because as it turns out, even if Americans are willing to get on a plane, they aren't allowed to go to too many places. Some countries have been easing travel restrictions in a bid to get their tourism industries rolling again, but there is one country that is repeatedly being left off safe travel lists, and that is, yep, the United States. Europe's famous landmarks and beaches are normally a magnet for American tourists and a major source of income here, but travelers from the US will not be allowed into Europe. If you look at places, Fareed, where US citizens can travel right now, the list is embarrassingly small. Before the pandemic, this was a ticket to 185 countries. But now, with the US still struggling to get its case numbers under control, an American passport is a ticket to almost nowhere. That's right, people. Because of how America has handled coronavirus, travel to most of the world has been shut down. So no more backpacking trips through Europe. Sorry, college students. You have to pick up your fake accent somewhere else. I got this one on Netflix. And you know, right now, I feel like most Americans don't even realize how much they've messed up a good thing. You guys are so used to being able to travel to any country at any time, no questions asked. That's not what it's like for most people in the world. When people from Africa or the Middle East wanna go on vacation abroad, we need to get permission from that country first. Yeah. Americans can just be like, my girlfriend Susie went to London. I'm gonna surprise her with a visit right now. We can't do that where I'm from. The rest of the world, we get questioned like we're on the world's shittiest game show. What is the purpose of your trip to France? Uh, I've always wanted to see Paris. And what is it that is in Paris? I don't know, the Eiffel Tower? Oh, you want to see the Eiffel Tower? Here, I Google it for you. Now get back on the plane, bye-bye. So your American passport may be useless for travel. But don't worry, Americans. The State Department has just released a brand new PSA about everything else that your passport can do. The following is a message from the U.S. Department of State. Despite America's excellent handling of the pandemic, our citizens have been banned from countries all over the world. And you might be thinking, I'll never use my passport again. But don't worry because there are plenty of other uses for your U.S. passport. For example, you can use it as a coaster or a barbecue napkin. Use the pages to draw where you wish you could go. Hose it down and it's a tiny little slip and slide. You could even use it to hide a pornographic magazine. Practice flirting on it. So do you come here often or? Whatever. She won't even talk to me. And did someone say origami? Or just duct tape it to your face and you've got a makeshift mask. Please don't tell President Trump we suggested to wear a mask. He'll get so mad. Your US passport, not totally useless. Joe Biden, former vice president and your favorite politician ever for the next 48 days. Recent polls have shown that compared to previous Democratic nominees, 
Biden isn't doing as well with Hispanic voters. Which is why yesterday, Biden went to Florida and unveiled his plan to win them over. A new ringtone. I just have one thing to say. Hang on here. <laughs> All right. There you go. Dance a little bit, Joe. Come on. I tell you about that. <laughs> I tell you what. If I had the talent of any one of these people, I'd be, I'd be, elected president by acclamation. <laughs> oh yeah! Everybody, get on the dance floor, and now keep moving toward the exit. No one should have to see this. But yes, at a Hispanic outreach event in Florida yesterday. Biden pulled out his phone and played a few seconds of the song Despacito, which you probably saw online. You know, people are like, oh, this is how Biden thinks he's gonna connect with Hispanic voters. What a pandering racist! What you probably didn't see online is the context. You see, Biden had just been introduced by Luis Fonsi, the singer of Despacito, who talked about how the song proved to him that in this country, we won't be defined by our differences. And then people took the clip out of context and were like, oh no, we are definitely defined by our differences. And look, I expect the internet to share clips out of context. But then President Trump went ahead and shared a manipulated version of that clip, which made it seem like Biden actually played the police on his phone, which will probably bump up Biden's popularity on the left, but I don't think that's what Trump was going for. And once again, this is a reminder. Before you get angry about anything that you see online, Just take it despacito. Now, Trump hasn't just been spending his time spreading misinformation on Twitter. Because while Biden is looking to shore up Hispanic voters, Trump has been making a play for a demographic that he's been struggling with. People who don't want to die from coronavirus. Which is why last night, the president of the United States and Hooters Diamond Club member took the rare step of sitting down for a town hall that was not hosted by Fox News. And it seems like he might be just a little rusty taking questions from a less than adoring audience. Uh, The wearing of masks has proven to lessen the spread of COVID. Um, Why don't you support a mandate for national mask wearing? And and why don't you wear a mask more often? Well, I do wear them when I have to and when I'm in hospitals and other locations. By the way, a lot of people don't want to wear masks. There are a lot of people think the masks are not good. And there are a lot of people that, as an example, you have- Who are those people? I'll tell you who those people are. Waiters, they come over and they serve you and they have a mask. And I saw it the other day where they were serving me and they're playing with a mask. I'm not blaming them, I'm just saying what happens. They're playing with a mask, so the mask is over and they're touching it and, put, and then they're touching the plate. That can't be good. The concept of a mask is good, but it also does, you're constantly touching it, you're touching your face, you're touching plates. There are people that don't think masks are good. Okay, no. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm calling bullshit on this. First of all, the people in the window at McDonald's are not called waiters, all right? Secondly, why is the president of a country with one of the highest corona death rates in the world still giving people room to doubt masks? It's so weird because Trump's followers will do anything he says. So why doesn't he just tell them to wear masks? Masks are great for protecting your health and you save precious time by not bronzing the lower part of your face. Also, I'm really struggling to understand Trump's logic here because he's worried about a waiter breathing into their mask, then touching the mask, then touching the plate, then giving Trump the plate, and then Trump touching the plate and then touching his mouth. But Trump isn't worried about the waiter just breathing directly into Trump's mouth. Here's your order, sir. I mean, basically Trump is ignoring the immediate threat to focus on a far less likely threat. If an asteroid was coming towards the Earth, Trump would be like, don't blow it up. One of the pieces might fall into my mouth and I'll choke on it. Oh, and just when you thought Trump's answer on masks couldn't get any worse, wait until you hear who he blamed for the fact that more people aren't wearing them. But I I will say this, uh, they said at the Democrat convention, they're gonna do a national mandate. They never did it because they've checked out and they didn't do it. And a a good question is you ask, 
like Joe Biden, they said, we're going to do a ma national mandate on masks. He's called on all governors to have them. It is a state well, responsibility. Well, no, but he, he didn't do it. I mean, he never did it. Yeah. Trump has a good point. Why hasn't Joe Biden instituted a national mask mandate? And don't say it's because he's not the president and doesn't have any power. That's not an excuse. Guess what, Donald? There's only one man responsible for fixing all of America's problems, and it's not Joe Biden. It's Jared Kushner. Look, guys, between this and blaming riots on Joe Biden, either Trump is delusional or he's slowly trying to Jedi mind trick America into thinking that Biden has been president this whole time. Guys, if you want four more years of this disaster, by all means, re-elect President Biden. You saw how crazy it was. Maybe this time you should pick an outsider. A new report has found that when New York City ordered one of the strictest shutdowns in the country last spring, it reduced the spread of coronavirus by 70%. Yeah, 70%. Normally when something is beaten that badly in New York, it's the Knicks. But even though stay-at-home orders saved countless lives, and even though most places didn't try anything nearly as tough as New York, Donald Trump's attorney general thinks that they still went way too far. In new remarks, Attorney General William Barr courting controversy by saying this about the coronavirus lockdown. Putting a national lockdown, stay-at-home orders, is like house arrest. It's, the, it's, the, it's, you know, other than slavery, which was a different kind of restraint, this is the greatest intrusion on civil liberties in American history. Okay, 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 okay. Slow your roll there, droopy dog. Corona quarantines are not even close to the worst intrusion into civil liberties. I mean, just off the top of my head, how about Japanese internment camps during World War II? You know, that was like taking a face mask, making it huge, sticking an entire race of people in it, and then saying they can't take it off. Like, just 50 years ago, black people were kicked out of restaurants and they couldn't vote unless they answered a riddle from a sphinx. I could go on, but it's only a 45 minute show. And don't get me wrong, I know that Barr said slavery was worse, but he shouldn't even be mentioning slavery in the same breath as corona shutdowns. Like, I, I, I almost wonder why it is that every time Republicans don't like something, they compare it to slavery. Obamacare is like slavery. Paying taxes is like slavery. Like, do they do this at home? Hmm? Is Barr at home like, God damn it, I wish Harriet Tubman would free me from this Zoom call. Oh, sorry, I thought I was on mute. Sorry, guys. Because look, I know not going to the movies sucked, but Trump supporters weren't exactly out here singing slave spirituals. Well, it would have been funny to see, though. Swing low, sweet Caroline. Ha, ha, ha. Why were we angry? I forgot, cause this song makes me happy. But while Bill Barr is trying to make it sound like the lockdowns were the worst thing to ever happen in America, his boss, Donald Trump, is trying to convince everyone that things really haven't been that bad, especially when you don't count half the country. Breaking news, President Trump suggesting the United States would be doing uh, much better with coronavirus if we just took out the death numbers from blue states. If you look at what we've done and all of the lives that we've saved, and I'm going to ask that a graph be put up, and now it's up. And that's despite the fact that the blue states had, had tremendous death rates. If you take the blue states out, we're uh, at, at a level that uh, I don't think anybody in the world would be at. Okay, no, guys, no, hold on, hold on. Did this dude just try pull the, if you eat around the mold, everything's fine move, but with corona deaths? I mean, while we're at it, why don't we just not count the red states too? Then the US has zero deaths, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. It's truly astounding that a leader, a leader would even think of his country in that way. You can't just write off entire states. My man, this isn't the electoral college, the popular vote counts. And by the way, these comments aren't just embarrassing and unpatriotic and just gross. They're also wrong. Because even if you made the very weird decision to not count deaths from all the blue states, America would still have one of the worst death rates of any country in the world. So even Trump's lies are lies. It's like the, the inception of lies. Somehow, Trump can't even flatten the curve he's grading himself on. <laughs> 